Hey everyone, Nick Raboy here with Couchbase. We're going to take a look at the Couchbase server analytics service. Um, and we're actually going to do so by using Node.js. So if you're unfamiliar with the analytics service, so it's another querying service, but it allows you to query for massive amounts of documents uh, using SQL++. So this is a similar format to Nickel. Um, a lot of questions might get asked, well, why, why would I choose analytics over Nickel or why would I choose Nickel over analytics? It really depends on a few things. So it depends on one, your, your data set size. Nickel is great for smaller amounts of data, um, but then if you ha end up in the hundreds of thousands to millions of documents, analytics might perform a lot better. Um, another advantage of, or, of analytics is you don't have to worry, with cre worry about creating complex indexes to be able to query quickly um, and over large amounts of data, whereas you would need to create indexes with Nickel. Now that doesn't mean that you should use analytics for everything. Um, because, again, it, it depends on, on your data size. So if you're using analytics on a smaller amount of data, well, Nickel's probably going to perform a lot better than analytics. Um, so it's definitely up to you to decide which one makes the most sense to you. Uh, but regardless, it's going to be very similar between the two. Uh, so I do have a bucket here. Uh, this is the travel sample bucket. Um, you can actually access this through any installation of Couchbase. Um, so if you go to buckets, uh, you can see that I do have travel sample. It has about 32,000 records. If you don't have the travel sample bucket, you could always enable it through the settings of your Couchbase cluster. So now that we have the Couchbase uh, travel sample bucket, let's go to the analytics tab. We need to configure that bucket to be used with analytics. Uh, so the first step is, well, we need to create an analytics bucket that points to the travel sample bucket. So let's go ahead and say create bucket. And again, this is the analytics tab, not the nickel query tab. Create bucket. We're going to call it travel. And we're going to say with, and we're going to say the name of the bucket that we're using is going to be travel sample. And we're going to execute. Now that we have the analytics bucket created, what we need to do is we need to create a uh, uh, shadow data set. So this data set is going to allow us to easily query for different parts of travel sample data. So for example, let's go to say create shadow data set. And we're going to call this one airlines on the travel bucket where type equals airlines. So airlines being a particular value for the type property that might exist inside of the travel sample data set, which in this case we're calling travel because it's an analytics bucket now. Uh, that doesn't mean that you can't access it as a regular bucket. It just means that it's usable within the analytics service as well now. So I'm going to say execute. Uh, there was an error, so let's go ahead and escape this. Type. We're going to execute it again. Uh, it worked this time, so as you can see on the right-hand side, uh, we have a travel sample. It's linked to travel. Right now, it's currently not linked. It's unlinked. Um, but we have this shadow data set called airlines. Now, this, this shadow data set could be very, very complex. So if I wanted to create a very complex query um, in order to say, you know what, the airlines or whatever this data set might be called, uh, it could be something complex. And you'll see where that's valuable coming up shortly. So let's go ahead and create another data set. Uh, this time, let's go ahead and say airport. And let's go ahead and say, you know what, type airline. Uh, that's actually probably air, airline uh, singular. So this we'll, we'll fix that. So let's do airports, execute. Um, we'll do airlines again, but singular. We'll go ahead and leave the other one there. It's fine. It's not going to hurt us to have, uh, have it there. Oh, it already exists. That's fine. Um, We'll leave it there for now. No big deal. Um, so we have we have the two. So let's go ahead and connect our bucket now because it's again it's not it's not linked up as you can see. We're going to say connect bucket travel, and we're going to execute. You can see now that on the, on the right it does say that it's linked. It's connected, um, and we have our two um, data sets, the shadow data sets, even though that one might be incorrect as of right now. But that's fine. It's not going to hurt this example. All right, now let's go ahead and try to query the data, one of the data sets. So we're going to say select star from airports. So remember, we, we did our shadow data set based on some query. We're going to execute. 
and you can see it returned our data very quickly. Um, and you can see that I, I had no where condition. I didn't say where type equals airport or anything like that. So that's where the value of your shadow data set might come into play because you can make this very complex uh, data set formation and query it uh, very easily um, for any future query. So it's just a personal uh, interest of mine. It, it, I think it makes things a little bit easier, but it's definitely not the core use of analytics. Now that we have this information, now that we have our, our shadow data sets, now that we're connected uh, to our travel bucket, let's go ahead and create a Node.js application. So I'm going to go to my terminal. I do have Node.js already installed. What we're going to do is we're going to create a new project on my desktop. I'm going to say uh, analytics project. I'm going to navigate into it and I'm going to say npm init hyphen y. So what that's going to do is it's going to create a package.json file. Then I'm going to say npm install couchbase hyphen hyphen save. And I'm also going to create a file called app.js, which is going to contain all of our application source code. So the example here is not to learn how to create a very complex Node.js application. Uh, we're just going to be focusing on actually using the analytic service with Node.js. So I'm going to say Adam, uh, because I'm going to open up this project with my editor of choice. It doesn't really matter what you choose to edit with. Um, totally up to you. Um, but now that we have the project open, I'm going to say app.js. And I'm going to say constant couchbase, and I'll zoom in a, a I'll zoom in a bit. Equals require couchbase. We're going to say var cluster equals new couchbase dot cluster. I'm going to give it the IP address, so it's not localhost. These are two different machines that I'm operating on. So I'm going to copy this uh, address here. Um, just strip out the HTTP. It's gotten me before uh, when I copy from Chrome. Um, you also don't need the port unless it's something special that you're using. Um, I'm going to say cluster.authenticate and we need to provide it a username and password. So I don't have a username and password as of now. So let's go ahead and create one in our Couchbase dashboard. I'm going to go over to uh, we're going to go to security. Let's go ahead and add a user. I'm just going to call it travel um, and I'm going to give it a password of just one, two, three, four, five, six. And this, this one is going to have um, analytics roles. Just give it all of them. And I'm going to um, move on here. So I, I have it and I'm going to go back to my Node.js code. I'm going to say travel. And I'm going to say one, two, three, four, five, six. And then I'm going to enable the Couchbase Analytics service. So I'm going to connect to it. So I'm going to say cluster dot enable CBAS. So Couchbase Analytics service. And you can actually provide several analytics nodes. Uh, we're only going to be pro providing the one, um, but our Couchbase Analytics node is that IP address that we had used. It's going to be on port 8095. So that should allow us to write Couchbase Analytics queries from our Node application. And you'll notice that if you've been following up with my other tutorials, uh, I'm not actually opening up a bucket this time because we're not going to be using standard buckets. We're going to be using the analytics service. So I'm going to say var statement equals select star from. And I'm going to say airports. Because remember, I think I messed up on airlines, but that's fine. Uh, so selecting from airports and I'm going to say var query equals couchbase dot cbass query dot from string pass the statement in and I'm going to say cluster dot query execute the query and then we're going to see what to do with the error or the result now if there was an error let's go ahead and throw it Otherwise, what we can do is we can just say console.log result. And we're going to save it and we're going to run it and hopefully we get some airport results. So we're going to say node app.js and it ran, it ran very quickly and it returned uh, 
it didn't, of course, return everything. It, it uh, saved us from the output here, but it returned some data and we could customize that query. We can add limits, we can add orders. We can add all kinds of different stuff to this query, just like we would any other, uh, say, nickel query or SQL++ query or anything like that. Uh, so the whole the whole process of actually querying for the data, it's very familiar to you. If you know, if you know SQL from a relational database, if you know nickel, uh, the changes are very minimal. Um, but the setup is a little different, and it's more heavily designed for uh, massive amounts of data.